This is what I like to use for calabetas, March browns, green drakes, just basically your bigger mayfly nymphs. What we're using for the tail is Betts' tailing fibers. We have a strap back here of deer hair, an underbody of turkey biot to give it some segmentation. The legs are again deer hair. The wings are the medallion sheeting. And if you want to add some real realism to your fly, you can put some little eyes on here too. So let's go ahead and tie this thing. To start off with, we're going to use the Tiemco 2312. And put that in the vise. Now we're going to start our thread up in the thorax area. Just like so. I'm going to take some of the Betz's tailing fibers. I like to have oh, approximately four fibers per side for this size of a fly. So what I'll do is I'll measure the length of the hook shank. We measure for the length. Tie them in. And as I wrap back, I'm pulling back on the tailing fibers, making sure that they stay right on top of the hook shank. Now before I let go of the fibers, I pull up so they flare out a little bit. And if they don't flare out quite enough, I just come in there and kind of stroke my fingers through there. Kind of splay them out a little bit. Now that I have them into two equal groups, I'll grab the side away from me and I'll come up with the thread in between them. Take a turn. And then go down back over the top again. Pull on them. You can see how the tails are pulling back a little bit. Take a turn. I'll take one more turn here and pull back. And as I do that, you can see just how much more they pull towards you. That just ensures that you have complete separation there. And then take one final turn right underneath it and lift up. And that forms a lot nicer split tail than using a dubbing ball. Let me trim off our excess. And we're going to tie in our ribbing. And for our ribbing, we're just going to use regular brown thread here. So we take our thread, tie it in, set that to the side. Next thing I'm going to tie in is a turkey biot. The reason I like to use the turkey biot is because it's so much longer than the goose biot. You don't get quite the definite segmentation as a, the goose, but for flies this size, I'm willing to give up that little extra bugginess effect to have a nice smooth underbody here. Just like the goose biot, it's going to have a notch, and also as we look at it. It has a translucency on half of it, the bottom part or the top part. And we want that translucency as well as the notch to be towards the back. That way as we wrap it forward we're going to have the nice smooth body. Otherwise if we had it flipped over we'd have that nice ostrich rib. So let's tie this in tip first here, right at the tail, and now we're ready to tie in our shell back of deer hair. And we don't need a whole lot of it. And clean out the under fur. The reason I like to use the deer hair is one, I like the natural gray tannish color to it. Plus it adds some floatability. And it's just 
a good buggy color to work with. I'm going to put it in my hair, hair stacker, give it a few taps, and we'll take it out. Then I just want to grab it so I have a good firm hold of it. I have a little, few too many fibers in there. Well, on approximately 10 to 12 fibers. Then I'm going to tie it in right where we left off with the tail and the biot. Take several turns of thread, make sure it's tied in there nice and good. And as I do that, you notice I, I never let go of the tips. Now I'll come in and snip off the tips of the deer. And now I'll bring my thread forward. Now to give it a little more body to it, a little more thickness, I'm going to add a little bit of a dubbing. Here, I like, again, I like to use that super fine dubbing because we can use it just like floss and form a nice underbody. Just like so. And we just start wrapping a little bit of an underbody on here. Form a little bit of a taper from the tail to the thorax area. Just like so. And now we're ready to wrap our biot. Grab our hackle pliers come up and we'll just make that first turn of with the turkey bye out with our fingers grab it with our hackle pliers I'm going to start wrapping this forward just like so covering up that little fuzzy rib on the turkey this way you get some segmentation from the turkey and a little bit of translucency to it. Right up to the thorax area. And then we'll tie it off. Snip off our excess. And then make sure it's tied down real well. Now we're going to just stroke all the deer hair straight up. So it's nice and even. Then we're just going to loosely fold it over the biot body and tie it down. If you were to pull too tight when you cinch down on the thread, you'd break your deer hair. Now we're going to take our brown thread ribbing and come through here. Nice even wraps. And this is where we'll get our definite segmentations and a little bit of color to our fly. Tie it off. And then we can sn snip off all the deer hair and our thread. And another reason I like to have a strap on this fly is it as we look at it, deer hair comes right down for a lateral line here. And then the underside will have our biop body. We want to tie this down real good and have a bring our thread to the front. On this one, we're going to add some eyeballs to it. Take some monofilament. Just take a long piece of it. And then we're gonna burn some eyes on here. So we just burn one end of it. And then we're gonna burn the other end. Now this is totally an optional step, but it sure does make your fly look a whole lot better in your fly box. And we'll tie it in just a little bit behind the eye. Wrap back, cut this off, flip it around, and we'll tie in our other eye.
make sure it's tied down real well. And trim off the rest of that mono. Now we're ready to tie in our deer hair legs. Grab some deer hair, snip it off, and clean out the under fur. Then we're going to put it in our hair stacker here. Give it a few taps just to even them all up. Then we're going to grab them by the tips. Take off a few. Then again, we're going to measure the length of it. For that, we'll measure the length of the hook shank just like that. Then we'll lay it on the side away from us. And we just kind of loosely take our thread, wrap it around, pull up, one more wrap, and cinch down. Now all that deer hair is on the underside of the fly. And then just take several more wraps to make sure it's tied down nice and tight. And then we want to snip off. the excess turkey or deer hair here just like so. Now we're going to pull a deer hair straight down and back and create a deer hair post on the underside of the fly just like that. Now we're ready to tie in our wings. We're going to use the medallion sheeting. We pick a piece of that up. And then we'll cut this end off here. Since this is the done, we're going to want the wing to be a little bit wider. And I like them to be approximately the width. If you measure from the hook point to the hook eye, I want it to be half that width. So I'll come in with my scissors. Trim out a section of it, just like so. This is some really neat wing material. Also makes it a lot easier to see it on the water too. Here again, I'll just figure eight it. Do one figure eight. And do the same thing again. And then pull on both sides. Now here again, if you have trouble doing that, it'd help just to take it and twist it before you tie it in. And just take a few more to make sure it's tied in there. And if you happen to catch a few deer hair fibers, that's fine, because we want them to splay out all over anyway. And then we just kind of pinch our wings together Fold them back at an angle, then we'll come in, snip it. I like to kind of pinch them together to round them off, just like so. So it looks a lot more like the natural. And then what we're going to do is kind of fold the wings forward a little bit. Take a couple turns of thread right behind there, tying down some deer hair. Pull our wing straight back. Take a turn right over the base of the wing. And then take another one. And what that does, it holds that wing back at that angle. And then we just advance our thread forward just like so. Then we'll take our thread right in front of the eye and in front of the eyes. Kind of pull our eyes up a little bit with our fingernail. Wrap a thread base underneath there. And what this does is prop the eyes up a little bit. And now we're ready to whip finish it off. So we'll grab our whip finisher Come up, and we'll 
tie this thing off. Pull our deer hair out of the way there. Just like so. Take and trim off our thread. Now the fly is basically done. What we're going to do is flip it upside down. Again, just kind of smash the deer hair. Kind of pull them around into shape. And if we have a little bit too much, we can always come in there and trim a little bit of it out. Just like that. And you can position the deer hair and bend it wherever you want it. Because then what I like to do is take the flex cement. And just put a little, little bit in the thorax there. Actually, you don't even, as you can tell, we don't use any dubbing in the thorax. The deer hair itself acts as our dubbing. Put a little bit on the deer hair legs itself. Just adds to the durability. And if you want to put some little water droplets on there, just get some of the head cement on your bodkin. Just kind of touch it in different places on the deer hair. Just barely touch it. And you get little droplets. Kind of like an artist working on a painting. Just a little, little touch here, a little touch there. And that's all you need. And if you have a scrag, scraggler, you can just push them down. You want to do this before the head cement dries. See how the deer hair looks? Kind of push it down a little bit before the glue dries. And there we go. We have the deer hair done. And as you can see, you can see the little air bubbles in here, which is created by just kind of dabbing the glue on there. And that's the deer hair done.